For fans and for the press, transfer deadline day is a lot of fun. For players, it can be stressful. Tell us what it's like for you. Actually, as uh, for the fans and for the players, uh, it's stressful as well for the agents because uh, they want to achieve all their work and they want to replace their players on the right teams. Especially the, the last day, it's a crazy day because all the teams they were scouting for the last couple of months, they kind of took their, their decisions in the last moment. So everybody is trying to play his game, to offer his good money, to convince the player on the sports aspect or another aspect so it's really a crazy day for for agents as for the players and as for the club how much does your phone ring on transfer deadline day how, how much do, do you wish that, that this day can go away or do you really enjoy it actually it's it's a good question because not only the last day the last three days like the phone can ring anytime 24 hours non-stop uh, it's really like uh, Everybody want to get in touch with you. Maybe if you still have one player, you didn't place him, and two different clubs are trying to, to, to convince you to get the player for them. Or maybe they involve other agents that they know you better, so they, they try to call you like different times during the day. How does the communication work between clubs, agents, players? We had Edgar Davids tell us that sometimes he knows about the interest in him from an agent, sometimes from a club, sometimes from another venue. How does that communication work and how, how tough is it to make sure that no one is going to do something without you knowing if that's your player? Actually, it's totally different in each case and it's, it's like each, each deal has his own thing. For example, sometimes a coach, he's an ex-player who knows the, the, your boy who play, they played together in the past, he's a young coach and he knows him, he tried to contact him straight away. Sometimes I'm close to this club, they are my friends, they know that this guy is my boy. And other cases, like the club got certain connection with some agents, they try to involve him to go and get other boys. This is how it works. It's really different on each deal, there's a different story. How shady is this business and how, how difficult is it to trust people? Actually, it's, it's becoming so hard for the simple reason that everybody want to be in this business. Even official agents that are registered with FIFA or like uh, normal uh, people, they just want to get for themselves space, telling that they represent this one or they represent that one. Or, uh, it's, really, it's really like, uh, you, you, it's not about trust, but we have to know with whom we are, we are dealing. And how do you work out commissions? Because a lot of times when you hear of these big deals that go through, agents can make a lot of money, and that can be the only motivation for agents as well, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times in the deals. How, how, how does it work? How do you negotiate your commission? Who do you talk to? How much attention do you pay to what you're going to get rather than what your player is going to get? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> legally, f through FIFA, the commission is from 7 to 10% on the salary of the boy yearly. So this, this will be the last step of the deal. After we agree on all things, the transfer fee from two, between the two clubs, the wages of the boy for the year, then we go to the part of our commission, and each club, they have their own rule up on from 7 to 10. This is how we, how we always do. But for me personally, I prefer that my boy is satisfied, first of all, that he will find his sports aspect, his uh, like he can improve himself in this club before passing to the financial aspect for me. So this is the most important things, at least for me. Have you ever advised a player not to go somewhere when you could have made a lot of money out of that deal? Different times, different times. It happened with me in the past, uh, maybe six years ago. I got a boy who was playing in the Italian championship, very famous guy, and he got a crazy offer from a, a country from the Gulf. I did my best to convince him to stay in Europe because the future is in Europe, but he couldn't afford refusing the, the, that amount of money. So he went there. Is it tough, though, when you're, when you're in, this, in, in this business? How much is, is it down to networking? How do you convince players that you're the right guy for them? Uh, actually, it's not about convincing them. It's about the work you show for them. When you approach a player, you're not going to arrive to him and tell him, listen, I'm the biggest agent in the world, just sign for me. You just to prove for him something, first of all, definitely you got your name from the past years you've been working. So then you try to make for him some sponsorship, uh, giving him right advices as on the friendship side. And then it, it's about the chemistry as well, how, we, how you feel comfortable together. 
that uh, you reach the point that will boil tell you, listen, I'm going to work with you. I know we can't talk about names of players, of clubs, uh, but I, I know you've worked on a few deals here, here in England, in, in Italy, in the Gulf, in, 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 in Europe. Some players you've dealt with uh, may have had a reputation for being troublemakers, for uh, changing clubs a lot. Uh, that, that there are all kinds of different players that you deal with. When you have a situation like that of someone who moves around a lot and has maybe a, a, a tarnished reputation, how do you convince clubs that he's still the right guy for them or that he can change? I do believe something that maybe 50%, to be fair, 50% of the players are troublemakers. And each, each one who's under the light, under the uh, being famous, is, is something like maybe can change a little bit your brain. But the, the thing I work to convince clubs to work with my boys is that uh, they have to look on the sports aspects, uh, how they can improve themselves on the ground. And for, for the trouble side, I, I believe that it's the coach's job to, it's the, the coach's job to, to treat the boy as a son and to try to change his mentality.